Ina no sa mane shate ya Mane ni ana ni ana no sa la ba so ya ya E ya ya na ni ana no sa de kasa ba no sa Ina no sa mano sa ya Kingdom come, kingdom come, kingdom come, thy will be done. He's the life that flows from the throne of grace. True nobility in life is knowing the Lord and walking in his way. The most glorious pursuit of mankind is walking in God's image and likeness. It is our utmost desire that you'll be richly blessed as you listen to this message from Living Scroll Ministry, a.k.a. It's the Bible Network. For more life-transforming messages, please visit www.livingscrollministry.org. He's the life that flows from the throne of grace. You're all welcome uh, once again in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate uh, Sister Faith for... The session we just had, I uh, was here and I was listening with uh, listen, Thank you, Sister Faith, for your consistency and your passion for, for God's kingdom and uh, all of the things that you do along with your husband. Praise the Lord. And I want to appreciate every one of us. Uh, I want to start from uh, APSS. What's the full meaning? Wow. All of the... I don't think I saw Sister Elimon there. Eh? Amen. Because when they mention uh, pressures from Futa, I, I say, I have to ask him that, is that the brother that used to come online? Thank you so much. And every other person and quite a number of us that will be, that will be coming on. And uh, you see, the best way to know how to do something is to be doing it. Amen. Is to be doing it. These sessions that we hold, we keep uh, praying, and praying and praying and praying and praying, worship, word and stuff like that. Of course, not just on this forum. I know quite a number of us are on other forums and on other platforms. But I just want to encourage us generally to, to keep on. That's the way to get strengthened and be strong in the spirit. By doing. Prayer is not something you learn in the classroom. Amen. Prayer is something you gain mastery of as you pray the more. As you do it again, again and again and again. Praise the Lord. Last month we spoke about the first uh, responder. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I want to hear one or two words on that, on that before we continue. I'm speaking on the last responder. Okay, Sister Elimon, I, I can come. On the first responder, Pastor made us understand that your, your, your first response to anything and everything should be prayer. Your first response to everything and anything should be prayer. No matter what comes, you pray. No matter what, um, what you see, you pray. Praise God. Uh, just like she said, uh, your first response to everything in life should be prayers. He decided, he taught us on um, if you are depressed, the response should be to depression is prayer. If you are to move forward, your first response to your moving forward should be prayer. If you are in trouble, the first response for you to give is prayer. He brought us so many scriptures to back it up by telling us how to respond to prayer. Praise God. Anything I say, I praise God for what God will help me to say. So we started by check, looking at what uh, what we have in Luke chapter 18, verse uh, 1 to 8. And then what Jesus called faith. I might not go through the scripture, but he said, men ought to always pray and not to what and not to fail. So that there is the what is expected of every situation that you find yourself, the first thing that a man is expected to do is to pray. And then Pastor gave us uh, several Bible verses that actually show that everything Jesus did, that the first responder was faith, that was prayer. And then we have, you could remember, we have, like, take for instance, watch and pray. And then there are some other scriptures that came up with prayer that... Uh, then me, I, I added my own because uh, there were songs that we used to sing when we were coming up. We used to sing, prayer is the key, prayer is the key, prayer is the master key. So Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Prayer is the master key, but we don't used to do it. But we pray, but there were several scriptures that shows that when we come to a point whereby your strength ends or probably you don't understand things, what you are expected to do 
is to fall back to the place of prayer. And then, as it were, prayer is, is, the, is the first step to solution. So, in any step a man wants to take in life, he must come through the prayer. That's why it's the first response. So, when things happen, what is the first response that is expected of us? Is to what? Is to pray. And there were several scriptures. So, I should check the phone and then, as well give us close to more than, if I can remember now, more than 20 scriptures showing where people, men of God, responded to, to, with prayer. Take, for instance, in Acts chapter 4, the scripture says, and the disciples gathered together and they prayed. And I can remember that one of their prayers is that, O oh Lord, thy, grant thy servant, O oh Lord. Uh, yes, grant thy servant, O oh Lord, and boldness to speak. And then even by healing, by healing, by healing, by signs and healing, and through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, I'm paraphrasing now. So that was, what they, that was the response that they gave to persecution. And after that, there was a change. There was a change. So I'm just giving that example in Acts chapter 4. So there are several examples that shows that the next thing is not murmuring. The next thing is prayer. And then you know the second day, something like that continued. Pastor Mika shared a scripture I can never forget. He said, up to now, until now, you have not prayed. I think that's the book of John, chapter 16. So there are several scriptures that were given that shows that our first responder is not just talking, is not to murmur, is not to gossip, is not to share it with uh, maybe if the first responder is to pray. And that we see it through the life of Jesus. Even after walking from one place to another, Jesus took time to pray overnight. So I pray, I pray the Lord give us more understanding. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. What we did was simple. We looked at prayer from the life of Jesus. And we established uh, the first uh, response in life. And like, uh, of course, they have all, we touched it. And uh, but Tucker went further. Jesus said, Peter, Satan has desire to have you. Right? What was the next thing? Eh? He said, but Jesus said, I pray for you. You know, you could have spoken the word, right? This is the anointed one and this is the anointing. Praise the Lord. But he said, Peter, I have prayed for you. And in a psalm, you will look at it that in the life of Jesus, Jesus is our living example. Jesus is the way. So, in him, God opens up the pathway to the life of man. So, certain things Jesus did, they were deliberate. He was trying to mirror how man should live. He was trying to bring out, uh, he embodied the significance and the importance of the manner and the ways of men. So, that's why he said, okay, why would Jesus even need to pray? He was there, Lazarus. He didn't, he needed not to have said, Father, I thank you, hear me always and everything like that. And he just there and said, Lazarus, come out. And if not because he said, Lazarus, come out. If he had just said, they come out, everybody in that grave will just come out. Praise the Lord. That's the extent of it. So the word Jesus was speaking, they were in the same strength and capacity as the words you hear in Genesis 1 that brought the whole creation. So that's who Jesus is. But he did not come here and be living zigzagging and be doing things zigzagging. Jesus moved in a manner that men, you know, human beings can see the pathway of the life of man. So that's why we took time to look at prayer, the significance that prayer occupied in the life of Jesus. Before he chose his disciples, he said he went and he continued all night in prayer. Praise the Lord. So did he need he <laughs> from eternal past he will have even known them and stuff like that. So but so this is how we should do things. So is he chosen his disciples? Is it uh, uh, even giving us instruction, the harvest is already ready, right? But he said, What? Pray. And then again and again, we looked at so many things that he did, and all of them were connected with the prayer, with the prayer life. Praise the Lord. So that underscores the necessity and importance of prayer. We know so much about prayer, we know how important prayer is. But that's, you know, and the things of God are dimensional. What you know today, the same thing you know, you journey further in that same knowledge tomorrow. Are you with me? It's just like John 3.16. You pick up John 3.16 today. Today is uh, 28th of August, right? 2021. 28th of August, we are looking at, we are looking at, we are beholding light from John 3.16. You take John 3.16 in the next three years, if you have really, really been joining in the spirit, you'll be gaining deeper, you know, you'll be seeing, you'll be having deeper encounter with light from that same scripture. Because the word of God is eternal. The word of God is an internal depth. So you keep going from depth to depth and you are not exhausted in depth. That's how the word of God is. That's why I picked the same Bible you were reading five days ago. 
after five years, the same Bible. And then you are having encounters, you are having, you are encountering light and everything. So please don't forget. It has to keep us humble. So all of the things you know now, today, and everything, in those same things, you'll be gaining, you know, deeper insight into those things. Praise the Lord. So, and then uh, let me just move on to the that's, The message is there. The message is online. It's across on all our platform, the first uh, uh, responder. Then let me now uh, move uh, further from, from there. I haven't laid that, uh, that uh, foundation. Please, I want to beg us. You know, Paul will say, I beseech you by, by the mercies of God. I beg you in the name of Christ. That's what he's saying. If we know the responsibility that is on our shoulder, and how do we know it? That's why scripture will say that Elijah was a man of like what? Passion. Look at when Abraham was on earth. Look at the responsibility on his shoulder. Praise the Lord. Life is not just the way we see it, carried away by the spirit of the age, by the passion of this world. The responsibility on your shoulder is eternal. Praise the Lord. God has entrusted us with his everlasting counsel. And then what he wants to do, he has given us the privilege that will do it in conjunction with him. All of those things, look at Israel as a nation, look at the whole story of Israel. It's, the journey began with one man. So now go back to the earth and go back and become, and become Abraham as a young man. Praise the Lord. Look at that weight. Look at the way God depended on that man so much. You were one of those stars. God wants to build the earth in a new way. And lo and behold, if you and I become that man, look at, look, in our, we will now, just imagine, just, just go back. And then we will now be coming casual. This thing is optional. I feel like doing this. I don't feel like doing this. I feel like doing that. I don't feel like doing that. You have a lot of responsibility. You are not one number in the past. Amen. You are a significant part of God. And his program and his agenda for the end time. Praise the Lord. And then we don't walk alone. It's just like uh, if we are going to do an assignment now, uh, who should I even use as an example? If we are, there's this assignment, there's this project you are going to work on, and they want to form the project team, uh, maybe they call uh, Ruben, part of the team is uh, Professor Wale Shoinka. Who else again are you going to put? Maybe uh, part of the team is uh, Wale Shoinka, and then who else again? Uh, Obasanjo, and some of those uh, you are going to work on the project. How are you going to, how are you going to, what manner of person are you going to be? I just mentioned names on it. So there's a project you are going to work on this thing. Now this project we are doing is, is Project God. Amen. And then this project we are doing, you see, we are doing it in partnership with God and in partnership with angels. Praise the Lord. Now how does God take this work? One, two. How do angels take this work? Then number three, how are men? And the women now that talking to you and I to see the work. So many things you see in scripture. It's a combination of God, man, and angels. So say I have this vision. God is telling me this thing. Uh, let's do this one. Uh, prayer. We say prayer, prayer, prayer. It just become a name and a concept or something there inside the vacuum. No. Jesus spoke about his resurrection. Mark chapter 8. Let's open our scriptures and read it. I know we've had a very long and a busy day today, so please be your brother's keeper so that are we there? Mark 831. Can we read it? What scripture is that called? It's Mark, sorry. Mark 831. Okay, me and uh, Matthew, sorry. I'm the one reading Matthew. Okay. Please can you read it again? Praise the Lord. Jesus spoke about his resurrection, but how was he going to be? Look at the look at the, look at the look at the partnership. He said, after, look at the last statement. Can we read it together? He said, afterwards. So how was this going to be? There, there is this scripture we, we know that uh, if you say to this one thing, be you removed and be you cast into the sea, we shall obey you, right? If I speak to the mountain to move, how is the mountain going to move? How is it going to move? I have done the speaking that the mountain move. How is it going to move? It will just move on its own. How will the mountain move? Everything <laughs> If I say this mountain should move, right? And I spoke by faith, and you actually see the mountain move. How did you move? Eh? Eh? By what? <laughs> Come and see, so that at least people that are hearing you know that you are the one that says it. <laughs> so, my question is this if you speak to the mountain to move, and you see the mountain literally move, or like Jesus with the fig tree, be dried up, how did he dry up? 
<laughs> Amen. Um, okay. Um, just like the, the like the analogy of the fig tree, Jesus spoke to it, and then okay, by the act of the supernatural, there is um, a creative force in in the word, in our words that we speak. Uh, it's I think it's a partnership with our words, then with the ministry of angels to move the words. To move the words. To... <laughs> okay, we speak. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We speak to a mountain. Mountain move, and okay. Um, angels in partnership with our words. Yeah, answer the chicken. Mister, I appreciate it. Yes, these angels are do it. You know, any angels are in custody of this uh, cosmic world. So anything that has to relate with uh, the things you see in this world, you read the Revelation that Revelation 16 and 14 we talk about the angel that has power over water, the angels of the water, then the angel that has power over fire. Jesus spoke that after three days I'm going to rise again. But look at Matthew chapter 28. Look at how the resurrection happened. Right? He just told them after three days I will resurrect. But how is the resurrection going to happen? Praise the Lord. Now two things were involved. So that's what I want to show us. Can we read Matthew 28, verse 1 and 2? In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, Mary, Mary Magdalene came and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake. Can we read the next sentence together? For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. You see how the resurrection happened? So Jesus was teaching, I'm going to rise, and he just thinks it's a concept that the Son of God died and then by just stood up. There was a stone that, you know, it's men that put the stone there, right? But when the resurrection was going to happen, Jesus was resurrected by the Holy Ghost, no doubt, right? You see it in, uh, uh, okay, let's go there before I come back here. We've seen angel now, let's go and see the Holy Spirit. That is uh, Romans 6, uh, Romans 6 verse 4. Therefore, I'm reading Romans chapter 6 verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as christ was raised up from the dead by what by the glory of the father even so we also should walk in newness of life praise the lord jesus was resurrected by the holy ghost so the other scriptures i could open but let's move on now the physical this one we read in matthew talks about angels came and moved this so now jesus was talking about his resurrection he had two things in mind he had a father in mind of course he spoke severally that uh, He's going to rise again and stuff like that, the father, and he commit everything to the hands of his father. Then look at the role that he just played. Then when the Holy Ghost, I won't open that scripture. When the Holy Ghost met uh, Philip and said, Go to the road of uh, what was that road? Is it Damascus? Philip, Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, sorry. The Holy Ghost asked him to uh, arise, go toward the south. Acts 8 26. And the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south, unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem unto what? Gaza. Okay, Gaza, which is a desert. He arose and went. Who spoke to him to go? Angel. Okay. Now look at this uh, place. After I met the man and he finished, look at verse 39. And when they came, after baptizing that uh, eunuch, and when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the you know saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing so the angel initiated the journey the holy ghost completed the journey praise the lord for this particular assignment so the angel of the lord asked philip to go when he went did the assignment the next thing the holy ghost came and took him so you can see the three people that are involved you had philip you had the angel and you had the holy ghost praise the lord so this work that we are doing we are not doing it alone the same thing that you are doing Angels are doing the same thing, and the Holy Ghost is doing the same thing. That's the consciousness I want us to have. Praise the Lord. So that's why sometimes you see people labor before you know you are tired. Before you know somebody say, I'm discouraged. You know? Sometimes you say people are not encouraging you enough or something like that. We don't understand this life and then understand this work. Praise the Lord. You are not, you are not just you are working with God. And then we are here to execute not our mandate, but the mandate of the Father. Things that God had in mind before he created the world. So this work is so long and it's so deep. That's what I want us to know as we move on. It's so long and it's so deep. You are handling everlasting things. You are holding things that are eternal. 
We are at the ministry in everlasting things. So that before you know, people we'll just start to do something like that with so much energy and every more time, all this burnout. You do understand the vision from the beginning. Praise the Lord. You understand it from the beginning. So I want to show us what I mean by the last responder. I want to show us the other leg, the other side of our prayers. You will pray, that's where it stops it there. But when you pray, a whole world comes into action. A whole world. This is called prayer. So you behold your prayers alone and you just pray to that. Some prayers you are praying, you are even forgotten them. Their understanding that we will have, it becomes strength. Even to join in this part. This part is long and it's deep. It's wild. It's wild. Praise the Lord. So you need spiritual understanding to join in this part. With the confidence in the things that you do. Not just that you do things. But in doing it, God wants to see that you do it with a perfect heart. And in a, in, a, in a context, in a sense, that perfect heart is the energy and the understanding that is in the things that you are doing. He told Amaziah in 2 Corinthians chapter 25. He said, he did what was right, but not with a perfect heart. Hey, let us pray again, yeah, pray as, or do something. Let us go for evangelism and everything. You are, you are, you are just doing the action there, but the understanding is not behind it. Jesus said, destroy this temple after three days, I will raise it again. Now they say, oh, kill you and everything. So this, this temple can say, do it after three days. See the way those men spoke. I was telling somebody that a lot, a lot of people who are born again were children of God, but very few people, very few people truly, truly believe eternity. Do you believe eternity? Let me ask you. You know why? If you truly, you are a child of course, of course, that just little, you know, you just need that little pinch of faith. You know, you become a child of God. No much understanding. Oh, we already have this. That means us children of God and uh, we, are, we are going to eternal inheritance. But how many of us believe eternity? It reflects in the manner that you live. I'm telling you. Few, few Christian believe eternity. Uh, I know we are going to live forever. I know and all of those things in the head. If you believe it in the heart, it will reflect in every breath that you take and in everything that you do. Are you aware that the life you live here is going to have eternal consequences? Those were the things that some people understood and their life was so radical. It's going to, the things you are doing today, today is August 28th. Are you aware everything you do from the beginning of today? Thank God you just said uh, past 1, 1 a.m. From the beginning of today, the 12 midnight of today, that the day is exhausted. Are you aware that everything that you are doing today is going to have eternal weight and it's going to impact your life eternally? Praise the Lord. That's why some people who carry gun, they went and take a city and they are celebrating victory. Amen. We see life in the context of eternity. This is my action. How does this stand in eternity? That's why we declare victory and that's why we declare defeat. And so all those jihadists are celebrating victory in Afghanistan. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the weight of our action, how does this stand in it? And it tells us victory or tells us defeat. A man was killed on earth, right? The people that killed him were celebrating victory. Now we are taking out of our sight. All those Pharisees, the demand was a headache to them. It was just their trouble. After they succeeded in killing him, they were rejoicing that uh, taking champagne that they have, uh, uh, they have succeeded in taking him out, right? That was the Christ. But what was the eternal significance of that event? So things are major with the weight of eternity. Praise the Lord. So when we pray, this is what I want to tell us. I saw it in the book of Revelation. When we pray, amen, I say it activates the whole world, right? Yes. It activates the whole world of angels. This battle, you know, there's an extent to which you battle this thing. If you read the, you see, the Revelation reviews, uh, how do I put it now? God declares the end from where? The beginning. The, revel the Revelation is... The book of Revelation is really the, the, the revelation of the end and the revelation of it opens up, make us see everything that it is the consummation of everything, how everything will be consummated. So we are supposed to journey from there and then and walk through. What am I saying? God, God created the end before he called for the beginning. That's why he created the hand before the, the egg, right? He created the matured man before the give birth to the baby. So God will show the, the end. Then from the end, he ask you to journey what? To journey from the beginning. So if he calls the beginning from the end, that's all God does. So that's why the book of Revelation is there, given us as a snapshot. We are supposed to look at that end and then go back and be energized to, to energize in our labor. So that's why he, I say, God, God, uh, he declared the end from where? From the first in the story of creation. That's why the, the fowl or something came before the egg. That's why the matured man came before the baby boy or the baby girl was born. So that when that baby boy is growing, he has a picture, he has a picture of the end that this is who I am. Right? Right? The little boy crawling, you know, I'm not doomed to be crawling, right? 
and he lifts up his eyes, see his father walk there, right? You know, one day he will stand up, right? That's how God leads us. He declares the end from this. That's why he reduced the perfection of man, even from before the new creation, Christ. Amen. This is the perfection of man. This is how man will be in eternity, you know, and everything. So, so he reveals it before the new creation was born. So he revealed, that's why I say, to grow unto the stature of the fullness of Christ that will become the perfect man in Christ. This is all the journey we are journey. God came and embodied it in Christ. And this is how he wants man. This is who, when you see Christ standing as a man, you say, this is who I created man to be. And this, this is the end of man, when you see the Christ. So God, so we journey from the end to the beginning. So what am I trying to say? If you look at the book of Revelation, mention one human being that you saw there, number one. What was the question I asked? Hmm. Which man was there? Eh? Okay, the John that was there, what was he doing there? Eh? What did he do there? He, one time you fall down, they'll carry him up again. Abi, one time you want to worship, but it was the wrong worship. They say, please don't do it. Eh? You saw, when you saw man, when a man stood in Revelation, what was he doing? Most times he was trying to attend the wrong thing. He had to guide that. This is an elder. This is John that wrote the book of John. Praise the Lord. John, John that was it. He said, I said, I anoint him glory and everything. He wrote the book of John, first John and everything. And he's the same one that wrote Revelation. Even towards the end of Revelation, see, after the whole song, he still wanted to worship. Amen. <laughs> You see that even you know that realm was high or too high for but if you see the book of this is what I'm saying, it's very simple. I was I just want to drop this built in uh to build to what we've spoken before. Everything you see in the book of Revelation, who were the ones that were doing it? Eh? Who were the ones that were doing it? Oh please, I want us to listen. So when we understand this simple it will help us considerably as we journey as we work with God. Then if we even look back in the light of the New Testament, there are certain things that will even become clearer. Praise the Lord. You see, the consummation of the age and everything. You see, you see when the Lamb opened the first seal, second seal, and all of these things, everything is there with the work of angels. Okay, let's go to this gospel. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 and verse 38. Matthew chapter 9. Are we there? Then said he, then Jesus said unto his disciples, The harvest truly is what? Plenty of, but the laborers are. Pray you therefore the Lord of who owns the harvest. Eh? Pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his into his harvest. Who are the laborers? Eh? And not because I say angel. Anything I say, I say angel. Please think, think before you answer. <laughs> eh? You know, human beings are very smart. You know, we are smarter than angels. Eh? They are very straightforward. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. It's we that can know how to take short cut. Mm-hmm. He said, Pray you therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send for laborers into his word, harvest. There's another scripture that talks about this. Luke chapter 10. Are we there? Luke chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. After this thing, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place where himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is what? Great. But the laborers are few. He said, Pray you therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Now the laborers are few. Now, I want to establish something. I'm going to open scripture to say. Now, it's of course, it talks about, I know, I've been trying to say something about the partnership of man and angels. To awaken our consciousness more to it. Now, you talk, the Bible speaks about harvest and speaks about laborers. Now, of course, we are part of the laborers, and angels too are part of the laborers. The extent to which angels can be part of the laborers is contingent on the extent to which we are what we are engaged in that work. Let me give you an example. If you have 10 people doing evangelism, right? Right? You know, I say this thing, we do this work with angels. So, but if you have 100 people doing evangelism, the, what the angels are able to do is to the extent to which how they are able to work with 10 men, right? But if you have a 100 people, to the extent to which, that, the extent to which they are able to work with the 100 people. So the extent to which the angels can do is dependent to the extent to which we are available in that work. Angels will have wrapped up this work if we have left for them. That's why I say you are the one that will hasten the coming of the Lord. The extent to which angels can work on earth is the extent to which we are doing it. That's what I'm saying. Even God Himself. Now look at uh, look at uh, 
Matthew 13, 39. When it talks about the parable of the sower, I will read everything. Verse 39. Can we read it together? Matthew 13, 39. He said, he talked about the Lord of the harvest. That he should send for laborers into his harvest field, right? He said, okay, he said, the harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers, who are the reapers? What do they reap? Eh? What do they, what do they send you one? What do they reap? That's why I said that they, they, they wait on our shoulder. Israel, I gave an example that Brother Ruben is in a team. That team comprised of Ole Shoinka, or Basonjo, and one of those renowned academicians in, I don't know them, in the world or something. Who are they? Do you know their names? I'm like just even looking at the field of academics. You have like people like Wally Shoinka or something, and like that, you are part of the team. How are you going to be working? Now, we, you are part of, look at the team that you are part of. Apart from we being a part, we have a ministry, we have a part of, I'm there, Roshas is there, Mecca is there, and everything. But you, you are standing in conjunction, you with God, you with angel, and then you. The same work. He said they have best. He said the reapers are the work. Angels. Okay. Go to Reve look, look at Revelation chapter chapter 14. Please, I want all of us to look at our Bible. That way it will be deflecting a, you know, a bit of tiredness and everything. Are we Revelation 14? Revelation 14, 14. Can we read it together? And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud, one side like side like unto the Son of Man. Who is that? Can you see the compound part? In one single walk. It's not something where you just do this one again and everything. He said, okay, can we continue? Let's read it again. Revelation 14, 14. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud, one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp stick. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, trust in your sickle, and he read, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Right. Verse 16. And he that sat on the cloud trust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was away. Verse 17. Another angel came out of the temple, who is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came from the altar, who had power over fire, and cried with a loud voice to him that had a sharp sickle, saying, Trust in your sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vines of the earth, for the high graves are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in sickle into the earth, and gather the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great wine spread. I'll read a couple of scriptures then, uh, I think we will we'll end it there. What is the other leg to these prayers that we are praying? You see, this thing, you see, why I say that there was no man in the book of Revelation, I say something there. There was no man in the book of Revelation. But uh, the only thing we saw about him, okay, let's even read this. Let me not uh, do the same thing and not uh, go to Revelation chapter, Revelation chapter six, uh, chapter five. Please, I want us to, if you don't understand, you can ask me questions. If we gain this understanding, it will help us tremendously as we journey this, uh, this part. Are we there? Revelation five, please, can you read your Bible? And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seal thereof? Verse 3. What did you read there? Praise the Lord. He said, No man in heaven nor in the earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to lose thereof. And I wept much because there was no man, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the angels said unto me, Which not behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the roof of David, he has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood the lamb that it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb. Having every one of them halves and golden vows full of others, which are the prayers of the saints. Amen. Look at verse 3. Can we read verse 3 together? Can we read verse 3? Look at verse, read verse 8. And when they are taken, the 
Now, the theme is the message here is simple. Then, uh, okay, look at Revelation 6. There was no man there, right? But the prayers of the saints were there, right? Have you seen that? That's it. There was no man in the book of Revelation. You see, all of those activities that have closed the age, you see, you see the heightened activity of angels. Those things you may not see in the gospel. Those things are not, you see them in the gospel, you may just see pockets and pockets of them. When Jesus said that we die, thought that we raise again, the same angels, when, was, when the resurrection wanted to happen, angels came. Angels were part of the resurrection. They rule away the stones and some other things that they, may, they have done that we did not know. Then when Jesus was going up in Acts chapter 1, when he was finally taken up, after being the disciple for 40 days, the Bible says angels came and then he went in the company of angels. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So now, look at Revelation 8. Are we there? You know, Revelation 6, he opened all the seals. We are open. Praise the Lord. Uh, he said, when he had opened, are we there? Revelation 6, he, they, they say Jesus came, there was no man, right? Okay, now. And when he had, Revelation 8 verse 1, and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And that angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer, filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightning and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to the sound. Praise the Lord. This is what I'm saying. You see, angels, all these things you read, how the age is going to be consummated is going to involve a lot of angelic activities that is beyond our knowing, that is beyond our comprehension. That's why when John stood in the, in the midst of the revelation, he could not understand it. So the prayers that you pray, the emotion that is set on, is not something you can comprehend in your lifetime. So when they ask us to pray, why should we pray? You don't know the reason, uh, okay, this and like that. Uh, now, you just imagine some believers that may not be so strong in Afghanistan. You keep asking questions, why, 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 you know, what has happened? Why has the Islam is taking over the Taliban and everything like that? You see, that is the measure of your understanding. God will only tell you, you know, you see, he will tell you his entire program. God will only tell you the thing that is related to your calling. Are you hearing me? Before you know you are looking, you, you know you can be looking at global, you look at something, what is happening in Brazil. You look at what is happening, you there are a lot of things you will not gain the understanding. You know, we journey by faith. God will give you explanation in direct relation to your country. There are certain things you understand in the general context of the entire of the, not just the program of God, but the specifics that God will give is in direct relation to your calling. Like I was sharing with the brother when we were there, those days when Jerusalem, you know, when uh, Jerusalem AD 70, is it AD 70 or when Jerusalem was invaded, it was torn down and stuff like that. I can't remember the exact date. Israel did not become a nation till about over a thousand years. 1948. What do you know they were people that were praying? Even before Jesus left, that was what Peter was praying for. Will you at this time return the kingdom to us? You know, Israel has lost their nationality as a country. The Romans are taking over. When are we going to become a country of our own? So when Jesus was going, they were okay, thinking Jesus would be the Messiah that they, they will restore them as a country, they were disappointed. And when he was even going, Peter, they were still asking him. So even in the natural that Israel becoming a country, it happened in 1948. Now, take my, now begin to walk back from 1948 to the days of the apostles that they were even praying for it. When it comes to the things of the kingdom, it's not, it's not today, today, really prayer. That's what I'm saying. It's not today, now, 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 now. I know there are some things you see when you want a job, you just need to get it within a time framework, right? Because you are limited, you need to settle down and do something. That's no, that's, that's, who are talking about the prayers of the kingdom. The prayers of the kingdom will be answered when Jesus comes back to the earth. But there are some sequence of answers that will come, that certain things will happen here and there. But the full weight of the answer is when the king comes. So if you want to pray prayers of the kingdom, you have to be ready. You have to be ready for an eternal walk in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Because you are working with, that's why I say if you are doing a project, I mentioned some men. Now, this project you are doing is project God. You know, the, 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 all God has the intentions of God. The eternal counsel of God. So when you are doing it, you are working with eternal beings. Angels are eternal. The Holy Ghost is eternal. You too, you must shift into your eternal being to work with this being. You want to the things of the kingdom? 
Uh, you do this, do small, small now, you are just discouraged and you are, you are just tired. Praise the Lord. So we must be ready. when you say kingdom, you have to be ready. You say, you say journey with journey will hand over the baton to another generation. They hand over the baton to another generation. Look at what the way Paul was writing and Jesus was coming the next day. Praise the Lord. Those are the expectations that those men have. Praise the Lord. So welcome to eternal prayers. Hmm? Praise the Lord. You know, the, you know there are prayers that are their prayers. You know there are prayers that will end with your lifetime. Praise the Lord. If you pray for maybe a job and everything, which God will answer because it takes you off our bodily estate. When you die, would that prayer still be working? Eh? Praise the Lord. Or even after your retirement, would that prayer still be working? <laughs> but there are prayers you pray that a thousand years after you've left the air, that prayer stands as an eternal monument. Amen. I won't have, I won't go into, but I open this scripture. You can look at it later. Another aspect I want to tell us is this: most times we are too conscious about now, 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 and too conscious about the present. You see, angels are. That's why I showed us that scripture that angels. You see, angels too; they are custodians of words, not just the word that God speaks, but the words that men speak. Are you hearing me? Hmm? When Joshua was fighting in, in Jericho. Joshua was fighting in Jericho and he made that declaration. Cause is the man that laid the foundation, right? The foundation is what? In his firstborn. And set up the gate in his, in his last. Do you know the biblical timeline to the fulfillment of that word? Joshua had died and he had gone, right? But do you know, angels were in custody of those words. Over 500 years later, the man's name is in 2 Kings chapter 6 or so, or 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 24. Is it Heliel or so? There's a way they call the man's name there. That might the days of uh, King Ahab. You know, there are kings that open portals in the spirit realm. Amen. There is this boldness. There are some evil that is hanging in the atmosphere. But in the days of some certain men, they activate things in the spirit realm. Men will rise up in boldness. You see a measure of iniquity on it. Praise the Lord. It's just the same way happened in the times of righteousness. There are some certain portals that open in the spirit realm. You see men are rising up in another frequency in God. Amen. So even in evil too, it happens. So Ahab. Ahab was not a small king. Ahab and Jezebel, the story of those people. Amen. Lord, talk, please note it down. One day I will, I will speak on it. You see, a high level of wisdom, how Satan invaded nations in the days of Ahab. Ahab. Ahab, Satan had a deep penetration and uh, you know, what God has been building with Israel over time. They crack it and well, they, they stop it from going further. Of course, temporarily, and then, of course, the thing will now bounce back again. So there are times that certain things God initiated, they stop it, and then they, it bounce back, just like in the garden. What God was started in shaping the top feet, but the thing bounced back. In the days of uh, Saul, what God initiated with King Saul, they had to truncate it. Then God had to bounce back in, uh, in David, uh -huh, like that. So, so the thing that God began doing in those times and the wisdom. Solomon was a man of wisdom. It's not just the wisdom of Solomon, there's another wisdom that played out there. You had the mystery of godliness and the mystery of iniquity. These are two mysteries, and both of them are heavy. Praise the Lord. I don't deviate from what I was saying. So let me come back. So what I'm trying to say is uh, that it took uh, that the things you speak are in custody of who? Uh, uh, Russia, the prayer, when we started this APPS, the first week that you guys see, if I ask you the prayers you pray, can you remember? You cannot, but you know that you pray in this di direction and everything. But the, even that day you were praying, the full extent of what you were saying, and you don't know. Please, I want us to get this. So that you have confidence in this thing. Your confidence will not come when, you know, sometimes this is our word. There's a measure of confidence you gain when men are following you very well, right? When men, there's this followership of men or people and everything, the whole world, you know, like that. You know, in the thing that you do, you need to have a very tall confidence in those things. The prayer that you pray. Remember the first section that you took alone in tongues. Uh, unless even you, with other prayers that you have done. The prayers as you were standing, as you were praying, you knew you were praying. But you don't know the extent of what you're doing. That's what I'm saying. Because one leg is you praying. The other leg is angels walking. The angels, because of course they are beings of glory. So they are, what you are saying, you may not understand the full way, but you understand the full way for what you are doing. Just like in the days of Abraham. Abraham loved God, he knew he was obeying God, but he didn't understand what he was doing. The full way that God was going to come as a human being physically. In Abraham, he may prophetically see certain things in Pluto and Shadow. But Jesus who came as a man and became the seed of Abraham. Did you see that guy? When he was walking from a uh, department for all Shadi, sacrifice your son, he was just joining in obedience and loving God and everything. But when you stretch it out, the full weight of what Abraham was doing, isn't it? 
So I want, that's why I'm giving that example so that you can see the things that you are doing today. They have eternal weight and eternal consequences. Paul said that was our life affliction. What does it work? An eternal weight of what? Weight of glory. As Russia, thank you, God bless you. Took a lot of so many sessions. Yeah, you know you are praying. Maybe after you pray and everything like that, but but now that prayer that you prayed, right? I want to that's the prayer I want to show you the other leg of that prayer. You now go if for nothing else. That's why I say God shows the end for where. Now go to the book of Revelation and then see those activities that was happening there. They were happening on part on the on the part foundation of your prayers. That I say you didn't see anybody there. So God is not in partnership with one man. God is in the, the end time work and the harvest and God is in partnership with the prayers of the saints. That's the greater partnership on earth. That's why I asked for that. Did you see any human being there? Our collective humanity. That's why I say the prayers of all the saints. So all of the prayers that have been prayed from the first man to pray to the last man that was going to pray. That's the great, there's their partnerships on earth. But that's the greater partnership on earth, the prayers of the saints. That is what will activate the ministry of angels for the, for the, for the end of the age. You see, they have best in the end of the world. And they repass are the angels upon the foundation of what? Of our prayer. That's why I say I was crying that there was no man. Where there was no man in the book of Revelation, in that dimension, in that place in the spirit, and where there was no man, there was a prayer. There was a collective prayer of the same. Your prayer is there. That's why you have to read the book of Revelation. You see yourself inside. Don't just read it as one mysterious book. When he said the last open the seal, before he opened the seal, the prayers of the saints preceded opening that book. Revelation 5. He said he was crying, no man was worthy. And then Jesus came and took that book. But before Jesus opened the pages of that book, he said he saw the Holy Ghost, the seven spirits of God. And then he saw the angels, then he saw the, 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 the prayers of the saints. Praise the Lord. So we know so much about prayer, but we don't know the weight of prayer. That's the truth. Even myself, I'm talking. Because if you know your prayer life will be different. If you know your prayer life will be different. The extent to which we pray. All these things we are talking about, we are going to leave it here. But this is the one that we are going to carry further from here. That's why I say that few Christians, be, I stand by that word. Few Christians believe eternity. You know it in your head. You believe it in your spirit. You know, you not say one, you not be admiring a post Do you know why? Of course, you celebrate his love and, because you believe it like him. You not be Abraham, that level of faith and you'll be working in that faith. Oh, this no, you will be uh, just filming. Oh, this, you will be doing this. It's not by planning to do it because it's because that your whole being is doing. If this thing is flesh and blood in us, you see the last responder. I see the first responder is prayer. You see, last response to our prayer. That's what I mean by last responder. You see, angels activate the ministry of angels in a major, in a dimension that is beyond in all the comprehension you can have in your lifetime. Jesus was talking about, hey, destroy this body and after three days I'll raise it again. Jesus was speaking and he was speaking with the consciousness of himself, his own obedience, of when he, the angels were going to be part of it and then the Holy Ghost is going to be part of it. Three of us are involved in this work. So if you think you are coming to say, some of you say they want to kill Christian, persecute Christian, you understand? They, they, we are the lesser part of the world, the greater part of this work on earth. You, they are living in a dimension of life, the Bible says, which no man can approach unto. You can't kill this work. You can ensure succeed in killing David. But when you kill one David, one thousand David will arise. He said the blood of the saints is the seed of the church. So what am I trying to say? It's not just that you are just praying. We understand, we know what we are doing. We understand, we are sure, we are certain of what we are doing. Because he said this thing is a timeline. He said God is going somewhere. Who set the time? That's why I say it is not for you to know the time that God has apportioned unto himself. Ask one. He said, boy, you go and tarry in Jerusalem until you are indeed with power from on high. The time that God has set in his own time. That's why they ask Jesus, when is the time? And they say, no. He said, the Father knows it and everything. But you, go and do what you have been given to do. Praise the Lord. Evil can never win. There, if there's a lot of things that Satan sees, there, there's something evil can never see. He says, darkness can never see light. Evil can never see victory. So whatever the evil one does and say this and that, they are celebrating uh, this one day that uh, uh, this, they can, you see, they are a generation of darkness. You know, they are a generation of damnation. They can never see light. They can never see victory. Nothing Satan does that amount to victory to him. If you want to look at it from earthly perspective, you may see it as victory for the enemy. But if you look at it from eternal perspective, you know that this is an eternal victory. 
the worst that the best let me not say the, so Satan the best he could do amen amen right what was the killing the son of God right that was the best that was the highest he could do but the highest became the beginning of our victory so when you hear any news don't be downcast don't be discouraged don't be taken aback don't be taken away and everything you must have confidence this path we are on this is a part of eternal eternal immortal victory we already have the victory amen we are following a timeline of victory and that's why we must push and do as much as we can the extent to which you are involved in this world is the extent to which angels will be involved that's what i'm saying praise the lord and that's why i must pray some more amen we must obey some more we must believe some more we have responsibility we have weight we have weight please i repeat the things that david was doing you you read the psalms now you saw his contemplation and his struggle right in one time he says, Saul will finish me and kill me from the earth. I'm the job is smiling in heaven. This man, you know, he's a high dignity here. You know, look at look at David. Look at the thing David was doing. You know, if when he was on earth, did he know the weight of what he was doing? He knew he loved God and everything. Prophetically, he said certain things. But in his day on call, you now come to daily life and everything. You know, he did the full weight of what he was doing. When Jesus came, they say Jesus thou he became the son of David. David became the father of the Messiah in the flesh. He was the last human name that was mentioned in the Bible. Of course, they mention Moses when they talk about the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. Yeah, Revelation 15 or so. But the last human name mentioned in the Bible is David. So they didn't know the extent of what he was doing. So I don't want now, with the benefit of this instruction that we have received in his word, I don't want us to now fall into the error that we should not fall into. We must understand the thing that we are doing. Praise the Lord. So when you wake up, not tongues prayer now, even on your own, the thing that you are doing, when you wake up alone and you say, Father, I thank you. When you assume that position on earth, I want us to understand what we are doing. The eternal weight and the eternal strength of the position we are assuming. The things you are saying will be held by angels. If it's in direct relation to kingdom. That a thousand years after you are born, that world is still living. Joshua was not in a prayer meeting, he was in a battlefield. He said, Cause is the man that laid the foundation of this city. He said, He went. Joshua died over 530 years later. A man came and wanted to do it. And then he had a direct encounter with angels. Joshua was gone, but the angels are not gone. They were still there. All the words that he spoke five years ago, they are still living on earth in a living form. I cannot even remember the prayers I prayed last year. All of those prayers are still living on the earth in a living world form. 1,000 years after David left, God still pre- we were doing certain things that God should judge them. He said, because of David, my servant. Because David was gone, but on earth, David was still living what? All of the things that David activated on earth was still in a living form before God. Spirits don't die. So works don't die before spirits. Are you hearing me? Works don't die before what? Spirits. You are the one that remember what? Spirits don't remember what? Because they never forgot in the, in the first place. Praise the Lord. See, I just remember the, the way we spoke it. Okay, now, are you not telling me that human recording is better than God? If we, this meeting, if you record it now, play it after 20 years, will it be like this same scenario? Will it play it out? Mm-mm. If you record it and you play the record, the record preserves the atmosphere in the living form, right? Like now, like uh, the World Cup they played in 1990. If you play the, if you put, if you watch the video, are you not going to see everything that happened that day? Eh? Are you not going to see everybody in the stadium? But someone that was in the state of, can you remember the faces of the people that were there? But the recording preserved those things, right? These things are witnesses to us. So if God stands and behold the earth, that's how he sees the earth. Not things does not pass away from God. Praise the Lord. Maybe somewhere like uh, like uh, if they behold that thing, like uh, maybe the football they played in 1990, Italian 90, where they played the World Cup, the World Cup, we can only accept by recording, but they, he, he look at now when that is reality. The way it is, that anytime you look at it, you are watching the game, you are seeing it like this is how you, this, this is how things are pierced in the spirit realm. It's, it's always there. That's how they live in those things. It's always there. That's why I say uh, all our works are recorded in the books and everything. Those things they use those things to make all you know, we know books. That book is that one. That's why they use those analogy. But they are speaking of dimensions there. That all everything is recorded in a book and you know, recorded, preserved all. Let's say then record. If you have to, if you have to, to use the last the language of today now, everything is videos. I be, I be. Those days it was record. 
Now he said this is a video, a video that preserves on that everything is captured on video. Eh? A heavy live stream like that. So that's how it's praise the Lord. Amen. So please, what did you hear? All right, I want to recall. What did you hear? Oh, <laughs> understand by the things that have been uh, spoken here. Abe, you are a Futa student too. But that's one leg of it and everything. That one will be burnt up with fire. But the bigger reality about the life of Abe is that you are an eternal being and your works are eternal. You live after the... You see, everything we do, we are thinking and living after the order of eternity. Our thoughts are eternal. Praise the Lord. That's it. That's it. Everything that we do. We see it in the context of our eternal nation. You can't be working. That's why I say we are working. That's why I say free the laborers. The labor, what this labor will do, what this is the conjunction with angels. We are angels and everything like that. So you must live. That's why when Jesus wanted to talk to them, you see what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration. Amen. He didn't talk to them as a man in human flesh when he was speaking to Moses and Elijah. He spoke to them from his eternal dimension. They, oh, you thought it's only that time he showed. No, you see, they just opened the eyes of those guys there to see that dimension. They could have seen, seen Jesus in the body like this. God just had mercy on them. wanted to teach them. So maybe sometimes that they see him there, they just, oh, Jesus is praying there. They just see this one man kneeling down there. If God opened their eyes, they will still be seeing what they saw on the Mount of Transfiguration. All those times, Jesus will be, and everything. They just opened, just, you know, there's so much darkness in this thing. Once in a while, they just open their eyes to see. Ah! And everything. Praise the Lord. So I want us to be strengthened because the days that are coming is going to be very long. Are you hearing me? Now, look at Nigeria now. Uh, Emeka, you remember the beans we bought? Is it two or three months ago? That bag of beans you went to buy. That should be one of those tons. Don't we finish? Is it? Well, is it December? We went to buy beans and we were sharing beans one time like that with some rice, boiled rice, beans, and some time. When was the date? Eh? It was during the COVID time, right? I was with a woman today. He said the be- yeah, I was, she was telling me the prices of things have skyrocketed. And I was say, ah, ah, ah. You know, say, look at me. He said, do I remember the beans we came to buy? That bag of beans. He said, do I remember? And I say, yeah. He said, we bought it 19,000. He said, that beans is 58,000 today. I, uh-huh. So please, you need to listen to this kind of messages. Because it's some certain days are here. You need to listen. Because I can be, str- this kind of thing will build you from the inside out. How much is the beans? He said, today, 58,000. I told them that I have said it long ago. This subsidy you are enjoying, the day that the refinery is finished, they will remove subsidy. You cannot buy fuel 160. You must buy fuel, I even was generous enough, maybe 250 or 300 or something. The day they finish that refinery. Amen. Praise the Lord. The refinery is about to be finished, and the foundation to it has been laid already. PIB, petroleum, that they are going to, they will remove, when that refinery is working, they will remove subsidy. We we'll go back to the days of cement. You know, cement those days, barely cement. Amen. Because it's going to be a monopoly of one man. Praise the Lord. And it's not just one man, one man that represents a lot of interest. So, so this nation is not about strategy. People is just about interest. If you pray, how did you get into it? How, we have oil. If we wanted to refine oil in Nigeria, our economy was good. The dollar, the naira was not too bad at that, at that time. We had money. There was a Gulf War where we made a lot of money from oil. If we wanted to build refine, even need to hire all the export, the export relocated to Nigeria, we build refinery. There was no insurgency. There was no bombing in Niger Delta. There was no Boko Haram. We had a prophet as well, but because of interest, if we import fuel, so certain people are going to benefit. We are going to be extremely, that's all. The rest of the nation can go to hell. That's how we started importing fuel. So they to continue to go stock. Somebody working in immigration told me, do you know, do you know, they say the passport, we print it for, we still print our passport. That's why passport is cast now. You want to go and do passport. You know why? He said they still print it from abroad. He said CBN can print it. Printing in Nigeria will be cheaper. It's someone that works there. He said printing in Nigeria will be cheaper. But there are some people that have the contract. That was all. Simple. This passport, printing in Nigeria will be cheaper. Because we can print what they are going to print. But we have to go and print it outside and then bring it because some people will benefit. That's all. There's, Things are not working in Nigeria is a lie. Please don't believe the lie. China in 20 years became a world superpower. Machine America neck to neck in some places. And the way they are going in America is on the edge. Shouting China is China is China, China, China. For within 20 years, China became a developer. It's doesn't, it's not hard, it's not difficult. Please don't allow, don't believe a lie. Hey, Nigeria is gone and everything like that. It, it works. When they when they start the true process, within 10-15 years, you are going to see a tremendous impact. Change. 
and then it's, it's, it's a lie. So forget. So praise the Lord. So days are here, and I say now, now the I I told the woman the thing is you take naira. By the time they remove subsidy and then you start buying fuel at two eighty or three hundred, the price will be like what you bought for nineteen naira. Be now if you take naira, you'll be saying like maybe one hundred twenty thousand. Then we praise the Lord. So because by the time they jump fuel times two, you know prices are not going to go times two. Prices will go to almost times three. Praise the Lord. Now I saw Lagos State Government say they are going to uh, to get a plate number now. This new plate number. I say if you want to change the old one, the old one is thirty-seven thousand. But the new one, I go and get it for two hundred and ten thousand. The purchasing power salary has not been increased. The minimum wage, they say some people say they can pay, they cannot pay. It's still a debate. We were here when they increase at Kumba Kufi from how much to how much? From thirty thousand to one fifty thousand, I think, to, to two hundred thousand. From thirty thousand to two hundred thousand. As listen. As the state government is increasing from 30 to 2,000 and they are not paying salary. It's not that they increase the salary of workers and you pay workers to send their children to school. You, you are not paying salary, but you are jumping that one up. What am I, why am I giving this analogy and illustration? See, you need to brace up because very interesting and exciting days are here. When you say be strong in the Lord and in the power of what? Even the wisdom to build, to build economy. Now, I'm not talking about Nigerian economy. To build your personal economy or even as a group, corporate economy and everything. Praise the Lord. So very interesting and exciting days are here. So we need to, to be very, very strong. And then understanding some of these things will be strong from the inside. Understanding some of these is going to help us to stay on our course, to journey. So was, uh, we, are, we are living here with uh, a perspective that is eternal. Eternity is our strength here. Hope you are, I hope you are, you are getting what I'm saying. Our true strength here is what? Eternity. One time, poor people like Peter John, he said, we, according to his promise, are looking to a new heaven and a new earth where he dwell what? You see where those men draw strength for so that they can labor here? Because you not get strength here. He said, in this world, you have what? Evolution. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please open to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Or first. Then open to, have you opened it? Then you now open to Hebrews. Let me give all the verse in Timothy. Okay. First Timothy chapter 3. Okay. That Hebrews, there's no point to open. It's a popular scripture, but let me read this one. Are we here? Great is the, without controversy, great is the mystery of God. Here. God was manifest where? Where? This, I want us to read this out. God was manifest where? God was manifest in the flesh. Justified where? Seen of what? Angels. Preached unto, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. God was manifest where? Where was he justified? Sin of who? What did the Bible say? You are come unto where? Teacher, the innumerable company of angels. So again and again, the scripture has tried to establish our, our company. You see that the thing that you are doing, it is sin of who? Who are the two seeing it? You know the implication of this and one name? You know you do certain things, right? Please hold, hold, hold that scripture. The mystery of what it is. It is sin of who? Sometimes we are so much particular about human sin. Abby? I just released one song, you know, within uh, five hours. I beat 10,000 views. But the day you release one song and within five hours, only 10 views, you say that one is not doing well. Abi, who are the people that sees our work? So please look at it very well. The mystery of God is the sin of who? Is it men? Because men cannot see. Men can only believe. He said, he said preach, believe. What did he say? You see men under where the earth fell. For, for where the oh, earth falls into. What did he say under? This any uh, call it eh? he said preached unto who he was spoken to man and then what 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 did he was he said believe among who he was believed in the world you see that the the name of, but sin is who sin is who justification is where some of us are using number to validate ministry now is there please look at it very well he said he was justified well in the spirit he was seen of angels. That's why Paul will say, why spectacle to men, to angels, right? The Bible talks about to the, uh, to the intent that the manifold wisdom of God will be no, made known to who? Principalities and powers were well, to angels. That's why I say you have come to innumerable company. You see, the spirit of just men made part. You see, the company that we have come to, these are the companies that see us. Anybody to see us, it has to be by revelation, right? That's why when Jesus was here, he was not seen of men, he was seen of angels. And the men that saw him are the men that they were, in fact, heaven has to help those men to see him. 
John said, I will not have known him except he that was commissioned him, said that the one you see the angel of rest upon. Praise the Lord. So if you are doing the work of the kingdom and you are looking for validation from men, right? You, you are on to a very long walk. You will experience burnout, discouragement, and everything. He said, sin of who? That's why I told her, Abraham, the things Abraham was doing, he could not see them. Amen. That's why I said, the just shall live by what? Faith. Just the eyes of faith and the comprehension of faith are what we have in this world. But the extent of the work, the entire extent, spectrum of the work, so it is seen by angels and then custody of those things. Please and please, I don't know how to, I, I just want to cry out my heart to all. And by extension of the people that have been listening online or that come across a, come across a, this, a, this, a, this word that has been spoken, a, that has been spoken here. Praise the Lord. And those of you that are into worship, I pray God to give you people understanding as well. Yes. So that, you know, they now, they, this is, okay, look at Jesus. No, oh, thank God for, uh, for Ruben, please come. Jesus met one man. When he was speaking to one man that, uh, except a man be born again, you know, he was speaking to one man, Nicodemus, right? But if you and I may just see that you are talking to one man, but when Jesus was speaking to one man, he was not just speaking to one man, he was speaking to the seed of man. Because that simple word that, except a man be born again, it was in the night itself, he just bumped into him. Eh? Except the man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That, they just had conversation. Who had a conversation with one man? But look at the weight of that conversation. Just the weight of that conversation. Did Jesus write it down? Did the Nicodemus write it down? It was written by the, even not for the inspiration of, even if they did not write, listen to me, even if they did not write that word down, right? If they did not even write it down, that word that activated something on it. See, some people just, they just this long room for God and everything. Because before the Bible was written, men were still led to God. Even when they were no Christians. Who led Abraham to God? So this is what we are trying to say. So certain things you are doing, I say that, you see the, you see the word that was speaking and the word that you speak. This word are being held in custody on earth. That's what I'm saying. Beyond the one that human medium can hold. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. Beyond the ones that human mediums can hold, this world are being held in angels. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not going to. God gave me a vision. I think I, I had a conversation and I recorded it. God gave me a vision of the end. And in that vision, I can just use five minutes to explain it. He gave me a vision like that. And the sum is that there's going to come a time on earth when there will be no single Christian literature online. It's all that our message on YouTube, Facebook, everything will be gone. And it's very simple. Should I? Let me explain it. Everything will be gone. When the rapture happens and all the believers are taken from the earth, who will be left? Who will be left? Hmm? Everybody that believes God and knows God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me just try and I'll, uh, everybody that believes God will be taken. Who will be left? Please answer me now. Eh? Unbelievers. And then the, the Antichrist, the reign of all those things. What happens to our messages on Facebook? Eh? It's going to be hate speech. Every believer has been taken from the earth. Then you're not going to see the ministry because the rapture has to be explained. They will explain the rapture. Ah, uh, they will explain it. Everything God does, it will be explained. So you are not going, you know, this I will say when uh, uh, um, John 8 44, that when Satan speaks, he speaks his native word, language, that he is a liar and a murderer from the beginning. You are not going to see the ministry of lie. You are talking about truth, truth, dimension of truth, and you're going to see the ministry of lie. And there, there was a test, they tested it in the Bible, and they succeeded to some extent. You know, now, when, you know, resurrection, the resurrection of the, when Jesus resurrected from the grave, Right? What did he explain? Did they succeed? To some extent, it was the test. After the resurrection, right, what did they do? They paid those, they knew Jesus said he was going to resurrect. They knew the resurrection had happened. The soldiers that were there, the witnesses, they came and told those men that the resurrection happened. What did they do? Now look at, they are going to use the economy money, right? They're going to use money, you know, there are three things, the money, military, and, economy, and uh, politics, you know? Power, politics, economy, and the military. So, when that when it happened, they came and then they explained it that his disciple came and did what and stole him away. And up to today, the Jew does not believe. Are you hearing me? So they've done a test run in the Bible. The resurrection was they explained it. That his disciple came and did what and stole him. Away. Look at that. Jesus said, we, He told the whole world, I'm going to. So they should, you know they should be looking for, and then the entire nation did not believe. Apart from the ones that God had mercy and they selected them out. How did they do it? They bribed those soldiers, right? And he now said that if the governor said, why did you not, uh, is it the uh, Herod or so? He said, we are going to talk to him, right? That don't worry. Amen. So how many parties did you see there? 
they are going to when the rapture happened they are going to they are going to explain they are going to reject it they will teach you they will explain it in schools and everything that you think they are going to say rapture has happened the believers have been taken from the earth they never believe the gospel from day one and they will not believe the event that happened and they will explain it and part of the thing they do is very easy now when they wanted to take out their donald trump's uh, account how many years did it take them to take it out it's just a simple commandment a command they will take everything out they will call it hate speech even right now, the battle is on now. If you talk about against gay, against this, they call it what? There are some jobs you are doing in America, they fire you. Now that this, the sin has not yet been taken, there is a measure of life. The Bible says, He that we told is still, we told him until he's taken out of the way. When he takes out of the way, he said, they, How did they call it? The, how did the Thessalonians call it? God gave them over to believe the lie, right? So they are going to explain the rapture. They will explain it. And then, uh, so when all the believers are taken, all of them that will be left with the Antichrist, right? So that you not believe. So all of those things, they will shut all those things down. They will start burning those books. It happened in the dark ages. During that, uh, when they were persecuting the saints and they were burning out books and everything, those ancient writings. So, and what is going to, now, what is going to be preserved, praise the Lord, please don't joke with the ministry of the school. Books, writings. Because if, with one command, you can check out all the Christians' channels on YouTube and everything. I learned there was a time uh, TB Joshua said he healed one person from the and they banned him from YouTube. I'm not for that story. You didn't hear that story. You had it, Abby. YouTube deleted his account. They say it was the most watched channel on YouTube. One time TB Joshua. He now came, he did his meeting and said he healed one. I'm just giving us an example to see where it's coming. Now imagine the saints are still here. Now imagine everybody gone. And to be left with only them. They will take it out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you can see where we are going to. All those, all this, the, the books and all of this is so that, but that is by the way. So, please and please, I want to, I want to indulge us that to be prepared for the times and the things that are here. It's not just for what you eat, uh, what you will drink, or life is taken in a suffering. We are here, we are here uh, on behalf of God, standing with God and standing for God for that which is eternal. Praise the Lord. For that which is eternal, and then we are going to pursue it with eternal strength and eternal energy. Amen. And then understanding is going to be key. Understanding is going to be defining. When they do all of that, so you just look at them and you just smile. Why do they hear the rage and the people imagine a pain, pain? Praise the Lord. Can you begin to pray? Can you begin to appreciate it? This is beyond the what are we eat and what are we drink. Jesus, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless her, be your name. Can we appreciate you? Can we thank you? We stand on our feet as we pray. I'm going to fit. Can I begin to talk to your father for an enlargement? Thank you. Holy Ghost, thank you. Can you bless him? Can you thank him? I want to appreciate it. Thank you. Jesus will bless you. Thank you. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be your name, our Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Holy Ghost, thank you. Holy Ghost, thank you. Thank you. Jesus will bless you. Jesus will thank you. Jesus will thank you. Jesus will bless you. Thank you. Blessed be your name, our Father. Jesus, Blessed be your name, Jesus, the Malikata. Bayekatu, we worship her. In that she did her. A Balikata, we worship her. In that Balikata, we cut Dali Bokoto Banga. In that she Bakata, we Bokoto Banga, we cut her. In Kantali Shakata, we kill a Bekate Balakata. That Ali she did the Koto Balakata. In Tarisha Balakata, Allah is she did the Bakato Bali Shibu. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I bless you. In Kalisha, Terry Mushir, Bakata, in Dalisha, Bikata, Malikata, Apolisha, Bakata, in Dalisha, Bibakade, Malakata, Bisha, Bibakata, in Dalisha, Bakata, Akadi Shikaba, Luku, God, I bless you. Akadi Shabakata. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the body shall be back at that. Yeah, back at that. The photo body at that. In Galicia, back at that. In Galicia, back at that. Malik at that. The photo photo back at that. In Galicia, back at that. In the Galicia, Thank you, Jesus. Male koto bali kada akali she bakada ingali she bala kada akate de she kada angali ka bala kada. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Is I want to ask us, you know, Daniel is saying he Daniel I understood from the book Israel will be seventy years in captivity, and then Daniel prayed. What else did he do beyond that? Eh? Then Israel was scattered around the whole nations of the earth. How did they come back to their land? Daniel prayed. And then when he had those prayer and he prevailed with God and everything according to God's plan for 70 years, then angels went to the four corners of the earth. And then they began divine orchestration. And then begin to bring people because they really passed at the angels. What Daniel did was just to pray. Number one, all you do, you will pray. And then when you pray, then it will bring, that's why I say it activates another world. You see in the book of Revelation, it said that when the, the, the one angel sounded, and another angel came and poured his, uh, he had a bowl. He poured it on the seats, you know, of the kingdom of the beast. I said, and his kingdom was full of darkness. He saw like all kinds of activity. He said, one, he blew a trumpet. He said, another one flew and marked the servants of God with their forehead. You know, all of those things are active things that happens on earth right now. That's the process right now. But all you, you are nice to do is to engage in the, in, in the ministry of prayer, which is the ministry of the saints. Of course, along with other things that we may do, but I'm just trying to major on, on prayer aspect of it, which we do, and then activate this larger than. You see, our prayer activates something larger than us. Amen. Our prayer dimension activates a dimension that is higher than the, our, our own dimension and the thing that we do. And this is those uh, angelic ministry, in addition to what the Holy Ghost will be doing in the lives of other people. Praise the Lord. Then, last, as, then, as we begin to pray, after this one, I will, I will, I will exist. I will for shouts to come. Then, uh, after that, you will now see that uh, Abraham, please listen. Listen, thank God for our, uh, thank God for is, is an added advantage for us in this age. All our electronic platform and all of the technology that God has given us. What Abraham simply did, that Abraham walked with God. And God himself became a God and angels. All, they both became a custodian of what Abraham powered on the earth. When Abraham even left, even before there was a record, right? Because Moses came much later. 
Abraham's life, the things he does, he works with God, his obedience, his prayer and obedience, his love for God, and everything that Abraham powered, God held it in custody. And then both God and angels began to administer the earth in line with the things that were powered from the life of Abraham. I want to ask you, are you now are you living in the consciousness day by day that the things that are powered from your life will be used to administer the earth in the days that are coming? He said that I'm asking you directly. That is because we must serve God and serve Him with a perfect heart. You have prayed the prayers of the kingdom, but without this understanding, you have done what is right in the sight of God, but not with a perfect heart. We must have understanding. He said, For this purpose, the Son of God is come to give us an understanding. And we are in Him who is the eternal God, Abby, and the everlasting life. First John 20 or 21 or thereabouts. That's how first John. Enter. One of the seven spirits of God is the spirit of what? Understanding. Please, are you aware that the things you are doing today will be used to administer the earth even long after that you are gone? Then what manner of men and women, what will we be doing in our lifetime? If you don't know, I know the things that David is doing. I know. And that's how we do it without looking back. When we break down again, we stand up and do the same thing. Praise the Lord. The things that people like Paul did, right? Is it not later they put the Bible together? Before they put the Bible together, those things were still used to administer what? The earth. So even somebody did not come in contact with the world that you seek, right? If somebody is out there and he has uh, all this airborne disease and he sneezes from that room, did you see the person? Eh? But those things will be transported air. A virus more powerful than the truth that has spoken in God in the midst of transporting it to the spirit of men. When they release one, if they drop a nuclear bomb somewhere in a, somewhere far from Nikiti State, there's a major nuclear bomb they'll drop in Nikiti State if you can kill everybody here. I don't see more powerful than the truth that has spoken in God. You may not hear the sound that they drop it there, but those things you know when you, the thing will affect you here by the means of natural transportation. But these things are being communicated and transported in the spiritual realm. Please, that's the first understanding we should have beyond our electronic means and our electronic mediums. Those things are good. God is willing to bless us who have contact with them and come in contact with certain things. But before that one, we must live from eternal perspective. And then eternal understand how truth are communicated and transported. This is our head in custody by God and angels. And then they are used to administer the air. Praise the Lord. So if we don't have this understanding, before you know it, you fall into corruption. Before you know it, fall in, I won't speak more than that. Please, can you begin to pray? Thank you. Jesus will bless you. Thank you. Can you pray? Can you labor in prayer? <laughs>